the Keys Dan Show. It's the Keys Dan Show. I need a new theme for the Keys Dan Show. You might hear news. You might learn stuff. You never know what you're going to get on the Keys Dan Show. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com. DJLittleRock.com coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, The Keys Dan Show. It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do you go? DJLittleRock.com. Let me say that again. DJLittleRock.com. Check availability, get a free price quote, and maybe you can have me at your next event. I like to party with the people. Yes, the the America is gr- is reopening. The economy is coming back. What do you think of that? <laughs> I invite you to give me a call at 501-470-6386 and you can be a part of the show. Give me your opinion. It is Memorial Day. Uh we're at the finish of the Memorial Day weekend. Traditionally, this is the beginning of summer. But uh, Memorial Day is so much more. And yes, a lot of people have been uh, giving giving people their opinions and the controversy of what uh, Memorial Day is. Is it for all the veterans? Is it it for all the people that are in the military right now? Is it, you know, what is Memorial Day for? Well, you can give me your views. I mean, what the reason I'm here on Memorial Day at 3 p.m. Central Time here uh, in the in the heart of America is because I, I want you to share your stories. Uh, I like hearing from people. And the way that we keep our fallen soldiers, uh, their memories memories alive, is by you, uh, you remembering them. And this will help to, to aid that and, and become a, uh, a, a um, what is it, a, a time capsule of sorts. Uh, and you can help to preserve the memory of those that have fallen. Uh, freedom's not free. I know you've heard that before. That's uh, uh, a, a, a common saying around this time and around all times. You know, freedom it has a cost to it. I wish there was no cost to it. I wish, to, you know, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. That I, I wish that there was no need for the armed forces for, for war, that there was peace everywhere. And I know that there's a lot of soldiers that feel the same way. People don't get into the army. Just because they like to fight, they want to hold a gun. They want to, you know. There's various reasons why they get into the army and why they they go off to, to war and fight for for their um, what they feel is right. The freedoms in this country are, are fought for with the blood of of our armed forces. And you know, I never had the chance to serve. I I was going to go into the navy, and uh, two days before I was supposed to go in, I got into a motorcycle wreck way back in. 1987 yeah back in the 1900s when that happened but my brother he he has had the chance to serve he was in the navy for quite a few years at least four years maybe six years i'm not quite certain about that but that's not what memorial day is about it's not for the living uh, soldiers it's for the soldiers that have passed i guess i can read from history.com a little bit about what memorial day is Let's see. Memorial Day is an American holiday observed on the last Monday of May, honoring men and women who died while serving in the U.S. military. Memorial Day 2020 occurs today, Monday, May 25th. Originally known as Decoration Day, it originated in the years following the Civil War and became an official federal holiday in 1971. Many Americans observe Memorial Day by visiting cemeteries or memorials, holding family gatherings, and participating in parades. Unofficially, it marks the beginning of the summer season. You know, the kids are getting out of school. Time to go play. Hooray! School's out for summer. But don't forget, you know, we can't forget the, the people that have, have fought, you know, but and died uh, for, for our freedoms. Well, I mean, I guess I can continue. I, I do invite you, if you have any family members or friends or, or people that you know that you want to to keep their honor alive and you want to tell them a, a story about them, it doesn't have to be a long story. It can be if you want. I got time. Uh, you know, it's a Memorial Day. I'm, I'm off work and I'm I'm happy to be here talking to you. I'll do it in FB Live. That's how I'm recording it. 
Now, for those that are listening in the future, I'll put this up as a podcast as well, and I'll put it up on YouTube. So uh, your comments, if you do comment in the Facebook Live as we speak, will live in the YouTube video uh, right up there in that area. That Right now, it's a gray bar, and soon it will be filled with YouTube comments. Now, I imagine that lots of people are out and about doing their thing, unless you're in the retail service or you know, some kind of service industry, you're probably off today and having a good time, hopefully with your family and friends. But if you're alone, you know, and you're hanging out by yourself with no family and no friends, I mean, what I'm doing is I'm ducking away from my family and, 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 uh, and making sure that they, they stay sane. Cause I think I, I'm too much on them. <laughs> uh, you know, currently, uh, I think they're out there playing video games and I'm happy about that. They're doing their thing. I'm doing my thing. And, after this, we'll all get back together and continue watching a show. I think uh, Stargate Atlantis is the show that we're watching right now, currently binge-watching on Prime. So, uh, yeah, we're just catching up on that. We watched all the Stargates, and now we're, we're uh, wa- watching the Stargate Atlantis. It's become a good show. Uh, Jason Momoa is in that thing. Yeah, Aquaman, he's in that show. So if you're not familiar with his work previous to Aquaman, that's something to jump on. Uh, he came in, I, I don't know if it was third or fourth season. And uh, yeah, he's been a good part of the show. That's for sure. So continuing with Memorial Day and what the early observances of Memorial Day were, uh, the Civil War, which ended in the spring of 1865, claimed more lives than any conflict in U.S. history and required the establishment of the country's first national cemeteries. By the late 1860s, Americans in various towns and cities had begun holding springtime tributes to these countless fallen soldiers, decorating their graves with flowers and reciting prayers. As you know, it's a beautiful way to keep, you know, we're okay. As humans uh, up till now, I believe we are all going to die uh, one day in some way or another. And this is a good way to keep their memories alive, keep the people alive. Everybody had a contribution to this world in some way or another from, you know, people that you'd expect to be, oh, they, you know, they lived a quiet life. They really kept to themselves, but you still remember them. You still hold their honor in however, whatever fashion that you do, whether it give prayers or, or lay flowers at their grave or, you know, but I, th- I think I'm not, man, you know what? I'm not even sure how, how I want to be preserved. Uh, when I pass away, I, I think it's on my, my driver's license. I, I'm an organ donor, uh, possibly use all the organs that you can. If there's anything viable, uh, give them to all, all the people that, that, and I'm, I'm, I guess I'm making a public statement here, <laughs> you know, use all, all the organs that you can that are uh, available and then, uh, from, you know, cremate the rest of me and, uh, you know, pour me in the ocean or, or whatever, you know, just, uh, yeah, just keep my memory alive. I, you know, maybe put a picture up, uh, in your house if you're one of my family or friends there you know just to just keep the memory alive there you go that's that's how i want to be honored i don't think i want to be buried in a in a grave site and and take up any of that precious uh land i think that's uh those places might in my opinion they're they might be going the way of the dodo they it's real estate that can be used i i think you you can um well you know what maybe not even cremate because I, I think you can you can just bury me in a hole and anywhere and, and hopefully the worms can eat me. <laughs> that's, that's one thing, but Oh, wow. I'm really getting off topic on this Memorial day. <laughs> if anybody wants to, uh, to help me out here and just uh, give the, the, the honor of their fallen soldiers and, um, and find, you know, let me know how, how, what, what, how they fell in, in battle or uh, in the armed services in, in the, in the service of, of this country. Um, you know, how, how they fell and how we can celebrate them and their memories on this Memorial day, uh, 2020, as we record this may 25th. All right. Uh, okay. Well, did you know each year on Memorial day, a national moment of remembrance takes place at 3 PM local time. So here we are <laughs> doing that, uh, moment of remembrance. I think that's one of the, the reasons that I picked this particular time to do this Facebook live at 3 p.m. Central time, uh, local time, our, our local time here. So uh, we can be a part of that, re- that moment of remembrance and we're celebrating 
the fallen soldiers that that fought for us, fought for our freedoms. I, you know, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Maybe somebody can give me some clarity on what fighting for freedoms is. You know, is it um because you know the soldiers are the 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 privates and the the lieutenants and the not the generals. The, those the generals generally stay back. Generally stay back, uh, and um. And they're the ones that that we leave in charge and are supposed to be smart enough to to end the battles quickly. You know, they they formulate ideas and strategies, and they send most of the time young men and women out to to die. Uh, you know, to hopefully to fight and survive, but a lot of times they die. I, I don't want people to die. I I, I want to hope that most people don't want to send people off to die. You know, I, I, I read it in history books. The generals say, oh, well, uh, we'll lose 80% of the people here. Or we'll lose 30% of the people here. And that's a, that's a viable um, loss. We can, we can live with that. We can cope with that. Hmm. I, I don't think any one life is a viable loss. And it's kind of, um, paralleling what's going on right now with this novel COVID-19 coronavirus. You know, we're losing several lives out there. Is one loss a a a, a good loss, a bad loss, a, a thousand lives as opposed to the others? Hmm. I, I guess there's more to that. Anybody can, you know, pull me out of this hole. <laughs> 501-470-6386. You can be a part of the show and tell me what you're up to. On this Memorial Day, I know I've been somber uh, for the most part and talking about death and 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 memories of fallen soldiers. But, you know, there's a fun side to Memorial Day. Yeah, a lot of Americans have the day off. And uh, and even the, the people in the UK, they're celebrating. What are they celebrating over there? I just I just read something about that. They're celebrating something over in the UK. It just happens to fall on the same day as Memorial Day here in the U.S. But uh, I digress. Now, Memorial Day. Let's continue here. Um, it's unclear exactly where the tradition of the 3 p.m. Uh, remembrance uh, originated. Uh, numerous different communities may have independently initiated the memorial gatherings, and some records show that one of the earliest Memorial Day commemorations was organized by a group of freed slaves in Charleston, South Carolina, less than a month after the Confederacy surrendered in 1865. Nevertheless, in 1966, the federal government declared Waterloo, New York, the official birthplace of Memorial Day. So yeah, it's uh, three o'clock local time. We're in that hour and we are having our national moment of remembrance right here on the Keys Day and Show. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, um, I don't, have anyone in my immediate family that I can remember that died in battle. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm very fortunate in that respect. I've had quite a few people uh, serve in the armed forces over the years and I'm proud of them. I wish they didn't have to, you know, now, Hey, it, now it's a, it's a new army. It used to be only men we'd send off and, and, um, and, and, off into battle, and now we send our women off into battle. Equal rights, right? How do you feel about that? 501-470-6386. You can chime in. You can be a part of it. Go ahead. All right. Uh, there's more. There's more about Waterloo, which first celebrated the day on May 5th, 1866, was chosen because it hosted an annual community-wide event during which businesses closed and residents decorated the graves of soldiers with flowers and flags. Decoration Day. On May 5th, 1868, General John A. Logan, leader of an organization for Northern Civil War veterans, called for a nationwide day of remembrance later that month. The 30th of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers 
or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land, he proclaimed. The date of Decoration Day, as he called it, was chosen because it wasn't the anniversary of any particular battle. On the first Decoration Day, General James Garfield made a speech at Arlington National Cemetery, and 5,000 participants decorated the graves of the 20,000 Union and Confederate soldiers buried there. Many northern states held similar commemorative events and reprised the tradition in subsequent years. By 1890, each one had made Decoration Day an official state holiday. Southern states, on the other hand, had continued to honor their dead on separate days until after World War I. Confederate Memorial, Memorial Day is still celebrated in several states and will be on Sunday, April 26, 2020 in Florida. Monday, April 27th, April 27th, or was, I guess it was April 26, 2020 in Florida. April 27th, Monday in Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi. And on May 11th, 2020, it was in parts of South Carolina. The practice of commemorating the Confederacy became even more controversial after a massacre at Emanuel AME Church in Charleston in 2015. Yeah, all right. So there's, there's Memorial Day for the Confederate soldiers. The, the southern states have a pride in them. You know, me being in one of the southern states right now, I'm in uh, Arkansas, Central Arkansas, Conway, Arkansas, just north of Little Rock. Grew up in Miami, Florida, which is an even more southern state, but not quite part of the Confederate South, I, I, I would imagine. There's still quite a few people that, that carry those traditions on in Florida, but, uh, you know, uh, they, they consider me a Yankee from Miami, <laughs> you know, because uh, Miami is the, the biggest suburb, suburb of New York. A lot of people uh, vacation and retire down in Florida. So I've always uh, wondered about my roots. My mom is from New York. Um, my uh, biological dad, and yes, I said it that way, he's also from New York, as far as I know. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I have Yankee roots, but I was born in Miami, the, the most southern state in the Union, I think. Well, I guess hopefully. In the, in the lower 48, 48, I guess Hawaii might be closer to the equator. <laughs> I don't know geography. That's the cool thing about these podcasts. You could say pretty much whatever you want, and hopefully somebody will fact check me because I like to be educated. I like to learn some things, and I'm hanging out here on Memorial Day and waiting for you, <laughs> yes, you, your calls. You could be a part of the show, 501 470 6386. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Tell me what you're up to on this Memorial Day. I just had some uh, some good barbecue ribs. I say good barbecue ribs. They're, they're ribs that are made up over at the Kroger market, uh, the, the Kroger grocery store just down the street there. And I went out there just to get some groceries, do my my essential shopping, as it were. And of course, on Memorial Day, there's a guy out there grilling up some of their ready-made ribs. Uh, not the best ribs, not the worst ribs. They were pretty tasty, though. I, I enjoyed every bit of them, and so did my family. I, I got two racks of ribs, and I had one. Do I feel bad about it? No. No, I don't. That's how I spent. That's how I had my Memorial Day meal. And I'm spending the rest of Memorial Day you know, mem remembering you know, the, the people that died. And and wishing that they ha didn't have to die. Did they have to die? There you go. Uh, asking for your opinion on that. Did they have to die? Uh, is that's part of it? You know, you. I wonder. I wonder. Yeah, could have. Could. Can war be prevented? Will there always be war? Maybe. Maybe. I, I suspect that humans like to fight. Uh, I I fight with my family all the time. Uh, and that's on a small scale. Thankfully, it doesn't lead to 
a knockdown, drag out battle where weapons are involved. And most of the time it could be solved with words, with negotiation, with uh, a separation uh, sometimes. Sometimes when I know I'm right and she knows she's right, I got to step away. <laughs> she's got to step away too. <laughs> so, uh, so on a small scale, war can be avoided. Uh, not at least the knockdown, drag out war. All right, there's a uh, continuing. There's a history of Memorial Day. Memorial Day as Decoration Day gradually became to be known. Came to be known originally honored the okay Memorial Day as Decoration Day gradually came to be known originally honored only those lost while fighting in the Civil War, but during World War One, the United States found itself embroiled in another major conflict, and the holiday evolved to commemorate American military personnel who died in all wars, including World War II, the Vietnam War, the Korean War, and the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. For decades, Memorial Day continued to be observed on May 30th, the date Logan had se selected for the first Decoration Day. But in 1968, Congress passed the Uniform Monday Holiday Act, which established Memorial Day as the last Monday in May in order to create a three-day weekend for federal employees. The change went into effect in 1971. The same law also declared Memorial Day a federal holiday. There you go. There you go. That's how Yankee ingenuity comes to be. Uh, you turn in something uh, sorrowful and somber, uh, a somber holiday where people are thinking about those that died and turn it into a three-day weekend. Yay! I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I got a three-day weekend. I'm happy about that. I get to spend more family time, uh, more time uh, hanging out and doing the things I want to do, my hobbies, my my things. Uh, one of those things is being right here and recording this podcast right here for you, the Keys Dan Show. All right. Uh, continuing with Memorial Day traditions. How are you celebrating Memorial Day? You can chime in. Go ahead. 501-470-6386. And I will pipe you right in on my little sound board. Sound board. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Memorial Day traditions. All right. I know some of you are probably celebrating those traditions. There's not a lot of people hanging out live with me, but uh, you'll be listening to it after when I make it into a podcast and a video on YouTube. Memorial Day traditions. Cities and towns across the United States host Memorial Day parades each year, often incorporating military personnel and members of veterans organizations. Some of the largest parades take place in Chicago, New York, and Washington, D.C. Americans also observe Memorial Day by visiting cemeteries and memorials. Some people wear a red poppy in remembrance of those fallen in war, a tradition that began with World War I, oh, with a World War I poem. Let me read that poem. They've got a little hyperlink here. Find out what that poem is. Let's see. Oh, it just talks about the poppy, uh, the World War II origins of the poppy as a remembrance symbol. Hmm. There should be a poem here. Okay. Oh, the poem is called In Flanders Field. Let me see if I can find that In Flanders Field poem. La -li -li as we go. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, okay. Let me read that, that poem that inspired In Flanders Field by John McRae. In Flanders' fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago, we lived, fell down, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders' fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you whom failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep through poppies, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Oof, that was beautiful. In Flanders fields by John McRae. 
I hope I did it some kind of justice. I know I stuttered a little bit. And it's nice to have this internet right here in front of me. If if I have a little hyperlink, I appreciate history.com for putting these words about a Memorial Day and the Memorial Day traditions and what is Memorial Day. Uh, you know, history.com is a pretty good resource on things. I have a few other resources sitting here in front of me as we speak on the Keys Dan Show. Memorial Day 2020. I know it's not all sad. You know, there's good times. It's a three day weekend, baby. Yeah. Having some fun and remembering. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, Americans also. Okay. I think we went over some of this. Americans also observe Memorial Day by visiting cemeteries and memorials. Um, some people wear a red poppy in remembrance of those fallen in war, a tradition that began with world, with a World War One poem that we just read. On a less somber note, many people take weekend trips or throw parties and barbecues on the holiday, perhaps because Memorial Day weekend, the long weekend comprising the Saturday and Sunday before Memorial Day, and Memorial Day itself unofficially marks the beginning of summer. So yeah, I know if I'm looking on my uh, Facebook feed and my Instagram feed and even my Twitter feed, and I'm seeing people just having fun on the lake. Yeah, and um, <laughs> social dis social distancing be damned. You know, um, I, I think we're we're done. We're, we're ready to break out. Time to get this economy started back up. I know the scientists are still working diligently, uh, and but um, I, you know I'm I hear tell of President Trump if there the coronavirus uh, breakout does have a second wave, uh, he's not closing the economy again. It, it, that may or may not have been a mistake. He's just going to put out fires as needed. That that was his declaration, and um, but uh, I don't is that the right way to go? I, I think I'm still vigilant. Not wearing a mask, not wearing gloves for the most part. I have a mask. I have one. So if an establishment requires that I wear it, I will wear it. But, uh, I mean, there's other things going on today. Uh, May 25th of, of 2020. May 25th, I also have the, the days of the year uh, calendar here in front of me as we celebrate this Memorial Day. And I hang out with you for a little bit on this Facebook Live recording this podcast, putting a little content into the Keys Dan show. Now, if you haven't taken a listen to the other podcasts that I do, I mean, hopefully uh, those might be a little bit more uh, entertaining for you. If you'd like to hear the story, uh, if you'd like to tell your story or hear the stories of others, I encourage you to check out my other podcast, What Makes You Famous. Use the hashtag What Makes You Famous and find it everywhere. I encourage people to, to uh, come on that show. Everybody has a story. My goodness, everybody has a story. And it's a way to, to record said story. You know, and, and if something, if I, you know, I, there's really not that much preparation needed. It's your story. You know how to talk about yourself. And if there's something interesting that you say that's, that strikes my fancy, I figure somebody else will be interested in that too. So I might ask a question to go a little more in depth on that. Now, if there are things on that you don't want to talk about, you don't have to talk about them. That's just. That's just silly. I'm not going to pry. I'm not that guy. I'm not, it's not a gotcha podcast. It's a, it's a podcast just to learn more about you and learn how, how people tick and, and, uh, everybody has some knowledge to impart. And I want to hear that knowledge from you. Now, if I don't have anybody else to talk to, I'll either crack open the mic and get on FB live and, and, uh, talk to myself and possibly talk to whoever comes across this video or audio a little bit later. And uh, I do the Keys Dan show. Now, there is another one, that the What Makes You Smarter podcast. Hashtag What Makes You Smarter. I do that one uh, almost daily, you know, where I do at least the 10 things you need to know today, which is 10 different news items that I've been pulling off uh, of, of different sources. And, and um, it's, it's pretty good. It's enlightening. It lets me keep up to date with current events, what's going on. And also... If I, you know, if I get saucy enough and I want to learn something else about another, uh, you know, another piece of information, I will, uh, you know, find a subject and, and research a little bit, talking to a mic about that. And if you like the sound of my voice, maybe you'll go on that journey with me. That's the, what makes you smarter podcast hashtag, 
what makes you smarter. So if I don't have anybody to talk to, then I will talk to myself <laughs> into this wonderful piece of equipment, this microphone that goes off into the internet, into the ethers, and possibly a, this could be the only source of history in my egotistical mind that survives for thousands of years. Yeah. Oh, that key's Dan. He knew everything. <laughs> but I implore you, if you're getting all your news from me, you, you're, you're, no, not good. This is a purely entertainment. Uh, you know, mostly I entertain myself. And if you want to come along with me, please, please do. All right. So there's other things going on today. Days of the year calendar. Today is, <laughs> it's tap dance day. What is tap dance day all about? Uh, whether you're an aspiring Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, or Ginger Rogers, or whether you simply enjoy celebrating dance, tap dance day makes a great annual celebration. It's a chance for you to put on your dancing shoes and enjoy this traditional form of dance, literally where you stand. <laughs> uh, let me get a little drink of my half and half here. That's half tea, half lemonade. Arnold Palmer is what it's called, I guess. I guess he liked to drink those. I need to look that up. They call it an Arnold Palmer. And whenever I pick it up at the local grocery store, it says Arnold Palmer right on it. All right, there's a history of tap, tap Dance Day, which is celebrated on May 25th as well. History of Tap Dance Day. Tap Dance Day officially began in 1989 and celebrates the heritage and origins of the dance genre, along with the notable tap dancing greats, including Bill Bojangles Robinson, the Mark Brothers, and more. Tap dance first appeared in the 19th century as dancers from across the world combined their ideas in the new world. At first, tap dancing was a marginal activity that began in slave communities. Owners would take instruments and drums away from slaves, so they began improvising, using their feet instead to act as percussion. Over the years, they developed their techniques, and many began to wear clogs in an attempt to create better sounds when they tapped their feet on the floor. Before long, tap dancing developed into a distinct art form, separate from traditional dancing styles imported from overseas. Tap dancers developed a unique sense of timing and rhythm. They learned how to move and tap their feet at the same time, laying the foundation for the tradition we have today. Slaves could afford little more than clogs, but as tap dancing slowly leaked out into the wider community over the following years, shoemakers began experimenting to make the best kind of shoes. They needed something light, stable, and that would make it loud, audible sound. When their foot hit the floor, eventually they came up with the idea of attaching wooden soles to shoes, but many of the early designs failed to provide tap dancers with enough stability. Dancers would slide all over the place on stage. It wasn't ideal. Others experimented by sticking pennies to the heels of shoes so the dancers could make a tapping sound, but still keep a grip. During the Civil War, tap dancing became Increasingly popular, traveling showmen would tour around the country, often with slaves in tow. By the turn of the 20th century, it had become a major component of the creative output of various communities. Tap dancers, for instance, would often support jazz musicians thanks to their ability to keep time to complex rhythms. Many made appearances at Broadway and vaudeville shows. Hollywood soon took up tap and began incorporating it into their film starting in the 1930s. Gene Kelly and Shirley Temple both became overnight tap sensations, inspiring generations of people to begin experimenting with the dance style. Likewise, Fred Astaire became famous for combining tap with traditional ballroom motifs. His sensational single-take dance performances soon entered the public consciousness, and we've been living with the aftermath ever since. The purpose of Tap Dance Day is to celebrate tap as an art form, an art form. Representatives of the tap communities lobbied the government to create a day in the calendar dedicated to the dance in February of 1987. Just a few months later, George H.W. Bush signed the day into law, and we've been observing it ever since. 
Tap Dance Day is a global phenomenon that inspires cultures all over the world. Over the years, it has grown in popularity. And by the time of the 2016 celebrations, the event generated more than 27 million mentions on social media. <laughs> oh, there's even how to celebrate Tap Dance Day. Well, I'll finish that up. Might as well. How to celebrate Tap Dance Day. And that also is celebrated today on May 25th. How to celebrate Tap Dance Day. When Congress was developing the law around Tap Dance Day, they developed some interesting and flattering ways to describe it. Citations from the original Senate text reveal how top lawmakers considered tap to be a joyful and powerful aesthetic and how it was, quote, manifestation of cultural heritage, end quote. There are all sorts of ways to celebrate tap. Some cities have celebratory tap dancing shows and displays to mark the occasion. So if you want to join the in the celebrations, go along and join in the fun. Here you can take part in big events designed to bring everyone in the local community together and learn a lot about the art form too. Instructors and enthusiasts will often provide free lessons and instructionals for anyone who wants to take part. There are also live performances from the good and the great on public stages, as well as the occasional lecture on the history of the dance. Alternatively, take a beginner tap dance class and get your toes a tapping. <laughs> you can approach your local dance studio and encourage them to put on a performance, perhaps recreating a scene from an iconic movie or show. Learning to tap dance can be a rewarding experience. Most people need around 100 hours of practice to make progress and feel competent with doing it. But everyone learns at their own rate. It is incredibly good exercise. So after about 20 minutes, you're already working up a sweat. Uh, the trick for getting good is learning a few basic moves and then stringing them together. Drills, therefore, are an important part of the training. If you want to feel confident doing certain moves, once you learn the fundamentals, it is easy to improvise on the dance floor and show off your show off to your friends. The best approach is to keep repeating the basics and then add a new move each time you do a practice session. You can even combine the celebration of Tap Dance Day with healthy living and family bonding, getting everyone involved. Tap Dance, therefore, can easily become a part of a sustained health kick. It helps with coordination, rhythm, cardiovascular endurance, and even flexibility. Another fun way to celebrate Tap Dance Day is to make costumes. Practice your routine and amaze and thrill onlookers with your skills. Tap dance in costumes were traditionally quite reserved, but in recent years, they've taken on a certain degree of flair. It is not unusual for women to wear frilly outfits complete with cane and top hat. Men traditionally wore long trench coats with and without hats. In recent years, Many people have turned to social media as their outlet for celebrating Tap Dance Day. You could create a video showing off your tap dancing skills or just having fun. You could even host a tap dancing live stream allowed, allowing everyone to join in. Your instructional video might encourage even more people to take part in this interesting and exceptional day. Tap dancing is a genuine cultural phenomenon and deeply entwined with major events in history. For generations, people have used the art form to escape some of the hardships of life and enjoy themselves. Even under dire circumstances, Tap Dance Day, therefore, is a chance to celebrate not only the aesthetic, but also the lives of the people who first made it popular. While legends like Bill Bojangles Robinson dominate the occasion, there's also a need to reflect on the lives of millions of people who helped the dance flourished throughout the 19th and 20th centuries. So how will you celebrate Tap Dance Day? <laughs> it just happens to coincide with Memorial Day. So while you're out there with your barbecues and maybe out in the lake, uh, who can tap dance on water? Maybe get up in your canoe and tap dance a little bit. <laughs> uh, I could see that. I'm combining the two days. Uh, there's many, many days in the year in this fine. I mean, just a... Uh, this is, you know, the days of the year calendar is pretty cool. Uh, Daysoftheyear.com. They, 
there's many different subjects in there and they give you something to do every day if you if you want to follow along it's kind of fun i i, I enjoy it i enjoy it a lot and it's also a towel day Ooh, okay wine day i think a lot of people celebrate wine day <laughs> geek pride day wow all right geek pride day is also may 25th uh, italian beef week is may 25th through june 5th so get yourself some italian beef uh let's see tuesday okay oh and we're looking forward to coming up soon we got rotisserie chicken day donald duck day world tapas day uh so, so much coming up <laughs> How are you celebrating today? It's Memorial Day. Hopefully you have the day off. I mean, of, of course, unless you're in the service industry and, you know, maybe retail, uh, a lot of the stores are still open. Thank you. Thank you for those that are in retail and in the service industry that are serving us and retailing us. I appreciate that so much. Uh, you know, a, a, the ability to, to get your groceries and, and to uh, have people take care of you is a is a wonderful thing. Oh, uh, well, there's there's more on Memorial Day. Let's see. Okay, well, here, here's a little article that was nationaltoday.com uh, about Memorial Day. It says Memorial Day, May 25th, for Mary, many Americans conjures up images of hamburgers, hot dogs, swimming pools, and summertime. But the last Monday in May serves most importantly as a time to honor those who died while fighting in the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a holiday seeped in somber American history and tradition. The day actually began as Decoration Day following the Civil War when mourners placed flowers on the graves of Union and Confederate soldiers. Yes, Memorial Day has also come to signify the unofficial start of summer, but let's remember the heroes who made it all possible. And there's five ways, five creative ways to, to decorate for Memorial Day in this article from nationaltoday.com. Uh, red, white, and blue, stars and stripes, flags and flowers. There's so many ways to adorn your home over the Memorial Day holiday. Here are some patriotic ideas. Uh, number one, unfurl those flags. Oftentimes, people store their American flags and raise them only during patriotic holidays. This is definitely one of those days. Number two, line your walkway with many flags. Nothing honors our deceased veterans like dozens or even hundreds of flags in your front lawn and entryway. Number three, uh, red, white, and blue layer cake. It's a decoration you can eat. Uh, number four, stars and stripes wind socks. Festive, fun, and patriotic. Number five, uh, even if you haven't lost a loved one who served in the military, you can still honor the fallen with flowers at home red, navy, and blue dahlias combined with the white rose silk flowers can make a stunning visual combination. Honoring the dead, honoring those that have fallen. Um, huh, they, even, they even go over vacation ideas. I don't think anybody's taken too much of a vacation. I guess uh, you know, five Memorial Day vacation ideas. Uh, what will you do with your long Memorial Day weekend? Uh, I'll go through them briefly. There's big, long paragraphs for each of the five. Uh, well, number one is find the nearest beach. Uh, number two is if you're interested in staying true to the intent of Memorial Day, but want to avoid massive crowds. Um, let's see. Okay, I guess we can continue the whole thing. Uh, no, in our nation's capital, cities all over the country honor our fallen heroes with parades, concerts, and commemorations. New Orleans, for instance, hosts a day of events including a concert and observance of the national moment of silence, of course. There are two other days that weekend, and there aren't many better places to be with a couple of down days than the Big Easy. I like New Orleans. I haven't been there too many times, but the times that I've been, I enjoy it. I like the, the city, the, the music, the feeling that I get when I'm there, especially down Bourbon Street. Yes. New Orleans is, is so much more than just Bourbon Street. There's so much more culture, but you go down Bourbon Street and you get it, you get it all. You get it all right there. You go from, from business to business, house to house, and there's different kinds of music, and different kinds of, of things to see, art uh, of all kinds, creative people in the streets doing their thing. 
yeah, New Orleans. That's a that's a pretty cool place. I, I I'd like to go back there, uh, you know, a few more times and enjoy myself in the Big Easy. Number three for a relaxing weekend away from crowds, consider a bed and breakfast. There you go. Uh, number four, road trip. <laughs> I guess they wrote this before the coronavirus pandemic. Not too many people taking uh, real long road trips unless they really, really have to. I know I'm staying away from taking long, long road trips unless I really, really have to, unless it's essential. Uh, number five, here's, a, I mean, this is a, probably a good one, keeping away from people, social distancing, uh, camping, glamping, or lamping. I'm not sure what that is. Let's go with that. Let's, let's find out what that is. Camping is always a favorite long weekend activity. Camping plus a few creature comforts like luxury tents has been popularized under the name glamping. Okay, I get it. You get a nice uh, luxury tent, one of these yurts that have the, 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 the comforts of home uh, that you could take wherever you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think that's roughing it. I know when I, when I went camping, they called it roughing it. We had a, the basic tent with uh, some sleeping bags on the floor. <laughs> that's pretty much it uh, a lot of times when we went camping. But I, I like this glamping. That's a pretty good idea. But if you're looking for something quirky to do this holiday weekend, might, we might suggest a new pastime, lamping. It basically consists of visiting a bunch of antique stores to find odd or unusual lamps. Think of it like a treasure hunt for the tchotchke nerds. <laughs> really? I guess. <laughs> Honey, you want to go shopping? No. No, I don't. Do you want to go lamping? No. No, not really. I don't. I got a lamp right here in front of me. It, it, it lights me up just fine. I, I don't need any other lamps. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess that's, hey, that's part of it. It's capitalism. Capitalism. You got to buy some stuff. So uh, get yourself some camping equipment. Buy it. Get yourself some antiques. Buy it. Yeah. Yay, capitalism. <laughs> you got to capitalize on it somehow. It's, that's, uh, that's the way of, uh, way of the country, man. You know, you find uh, you you find something and you capitalize on it. That's that's part of the deal. All right. Well, I mean, I've been hanging out here a, a while on this Memorial Day. I spent some time here. I do invite you to come on. I, I I'm, I've been doing these these lives at 6 p.m. Central Time on Sundays. So if you want to be a part of that, I'm going to try to do them uh, pretty regularly, probably as often as I can, unless I have an event. Unless I'm DJing a wedding or a party or anything on a Sunday afternoon, I will try to make an effort to come out here with you and spend some time. And maybe you'll spend some time with me and give me a call, 501-470-6386. Now, that's the number to use if you want to be a part of the What Makes You Famous podcast as well. Hashtag What Makes You Famous. Or if you want to give me a subject to go through on the What Makes You Smarter podcast, hashtag what makes you smarter? Then you can also give me a call on that number. Or if a phone call is not the way to go, or you can even text me on those numbers as well on that number. But if a phone call is not your thing, it's not your bag, baby, then uh, you can give me an email, an old fashioned email at info at radio what.com. Info at radio what.com. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, what else is going on today? I got the days of the year calendar. I, I, I kind of was interested. Okay, Tau Day, eh, Monday, May 25th, May 25th. It's Geek Pride Day as well. What is Geek Pride Day? Is that a pretty long one? Okay, they got a little bit of an article here. Geek Pride Day. I think I'll I'll finish off a Memorial Day celebration with reading about Geek Pride Day. And if you want to stick around with me, hey, if you like the sound of my voice, if you're just jogging or whatever, (laughs) whatever, whatever you're doing as you listen to podcasts, and I appreciate you listening to my podcast. Of all the hundreds of thousands of podcasts to listen to, thank you for joining me on this day, whatever day that might be. But uh, May 25th is Geek Pride Day. Some people are old enough to remember when being called a geek was derogatory and meant you were probably pale, non-athletic, wore thick glasses, had almost no friends, and were only good at activities that could be done indoors on a chair in your underwear. (laughs) Thankfully, the word geek has evolved greatly over the years, and now it usually means a person who is fascinated with a certain complicated subject, be it mathematics, video games, fantasy literature, science, fiction films, or one of the many others. 
and knows almost everything there is to know about it. That actually sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? So why not celebrate all of those geeks in this world with Geek Pride Day? Let your geek flag fry. <laughs> Get, uh, let me bleep, say that again. Let your geek flag fly on Geek Pride Day. I almost said that right. Take take three. Let your geek flag fly on Geek Pride Day. Oh, say that ten times fast. I dare you. Whether you're a closet geek or a geeky and proud, you have an entire day to celebrate with your fellow geeky buddies. The term geek chic is now used widely in society, which just goes to show that it's cool to be a geek these days. Geek Pride Day gives you a chance to be completely unapologetic about who you are. Dress in any style you like. Dress up as your favorite science fiction character or spend the entire day geeking out and learning math if you prefer. There are no limits to Geek Pride Day. So let your inner geek run free. <sighs> History of Geek Pride Day. The idea for dedicating a day to celebrating geekiness originated in Spain 2006 when Spanish blogger German Martinez, who chose the day to coincide with the 1977 release of Star Wars, Geek Pride Day, spread rapidly across the internet and soon after the world, drawing attention from mainstream media as well. One of the events organize, organized, <laughs> I think that was, oh, that was, uh, oh my goodness, the, the movie with uh, Robert De Niro, a taxi driver, organized. Uh, one of the events organized to celebrate this day was in Madrid when 300 geeks played a game of human Pac-Man together. A list of the basic rights and responsibilities of geeks was also written up. The rights include the right not to like football or any other sport and the right not to be in style. And the responsibilities include attend every geeky movie on opening night and buy every geeky book before anyone else. 2008 was the first year when Geek Pride was officially celebrated in the U.S. And one year later, 2009, News of the day had reached the Science Channel that decided to take part in the celebration by airing special programming on May 25th. In 2010, Geek Pride, oh, that was in 2010. Oh, yeah. Geek Pride Day spread even further to countries like Canada, Hungary, Israel, and Romania. A Geek Pride parade was held in Gothenburg, Sweden in 2013. Let me punch one of these. There you go. How to celebrate Geek Pride Day. If you identify as a geek, this day is your day to show the world how proud you are to have interests and hobbies that are truly important to you. With Geek Pride Day celebrations being held in quite a few countries around the world, why not take part in one? Over the past few decades, geeks have they have often felt a little alienated from their peers because they had different skills and interests, making a Geek Pride celebration the perfect time to meet plenty of like-minded people who don't think that watching Firefly until you know every scene by heart is odd. <laughs> the Introvert's Guide to Celebrating Geek Pride Day. It's no secret that many people probably feel pretty scared about letting their inner geek shine through on geek pride day you don't have to parade the streets and wear a crazy costume if it makes you feel completely out of your comfort zone you can stay home with your best friends or family if that makes you feel more at ease there is a very high chance that most of your geek friends feel the same too so they would probably be more than happy to stay at home and celebrate in a more intimate way Similarly, if you can't attend a Geek Pride celebration or just feel it's not your scene, inviting a few fellow geeks over to your house for an all-geek party could prove a really great time as well. From re-watching Star Wars for the umpteenth time to a good old game of Dungeons & Dragons to trading limited edition collectibles, your little get-together is sure to be a celebration of your collective geekiness. <laughs> Well, all right, party people. It turns out there's a time limit on FB Live. It cut me off at about an hour. So I guess we can finish it off right here. Hopefully you had a good 
Memorial Day celebration wherever you were. And hopefully you had a good time listening to the sound of my voice and made you feel a little bit better. All right. The smoothness. If you uh, would like to tell your story or hear the stories of others, I encourage you to check out my other podcast, What Makes You Famous, using the hashtag What Makes You Famous. Uh, you can give me a call at 501-470-6386 if you want to be a part of that show or info at re- radiowhat.com, info at radiowhat.com, and you can be a part of that show. And uh, if you'd like to learn some things, maybe fill your noggin with some knowledge, just like I like to do, you can check out the What Makes You Smarter podcast at um, hashtag What Makes You Smarter. And if you want to tell me a subject, I encourage you to use the aforementioned phone number. All right. Well, I'll be back probably on Sunday, 6 p.m. Central Time for another FB Live edition of the Keys Dan Show. I thank you so much for sticking around with me, for putting up with all my nonsense. Uh, That's it for me, the Keys Dan Show. It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com. Peace. I'm out of here.